This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon. My name is Ray Tsuchiyama for another great, great interview show named Business in Hawaii. And our topic today is real estate, or more specifically, commercial and industrial real estate. We have a guest who is going to be really discussing how real estate is reflective of the overall economy and how the overall economy affects real estate. And Hawaii is unique in many ways regarding real estate compared to other markets on the mainland, like Las Vegas or Phoenix or Los Angeles. We're an outpost, a string of eight islands in the middle of the Pacific. And we have today Matt Mark Ambard of Ambard & Company. He is principal and has been independent in this area of commercial and industrial real estate since the mid-1990s. Welcome to the show, Mark. Well, thank you, Ray. Nice to be here. Nice to be with you. We've known each other a long time. That's right. And uh, the reason why I chose Mark for today's show is that in my previous career in commercial real estate, he worked at the same office. And today, why don't we start with the state of real estate, commercial and industrial in Hawaii in 2018. What's about it that makes it unique? And uh, tell us uh, how you see it. Okay. Mark is strong. Okay. It's a good time to own commercial real estate. Okay. It's also probably a good time to buy commercial real estate. Um, you've heard about stocks. I'd rather buy a great stock at a good price than a good stock at a great price. Same with real estate. A great property will appreciate. A great property will generate income. This is a good time. And how about for tenants out there? Is it uh, a time that uh, they find difficulty finding inventory for their own uh, yeah. businesses to put their uh, you know, yeah. uh, 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 items in uh, storage or to uh, operate uh, their own business? How is it for tenants? Well, tenants don't own real estate. It's a good time to own real estate. We have a constrained, economy, or constrained land situation. We don't build as much as maybe we need. We don't develop maybe as much as we would like, but we also don't want to give up the beautiful land features and the parts that we love about Hawaii. So what's the occupancy rate in commercial real estate, uh, and industrial real estate? It's high. We're probably 94 to 95% in warehouses. I hear the office market is slacking off a little bit. I don't deal with it a lot. Um, I know that you were talking about how difficult it is for tenants Finding places is the most difficult part for tenants. And, and what? And if you were a tenant, or if you're going to tell uh, a tenant advice about finding a place and, and the constraints or the framework or the pricing, what would you tell them? This is going to sound self-serving. I'd say find a good realtor in your market. Okay. If you're looking for a restaurant, find someone who's done restaurants and a number of them. Just as when you have a surgery, you might say, uh, have you done a few of these surgeries, doctor? Is this the yeah. first time you've operated on a foot? And he says, I've done 10,000 feet. You might feel confident. Okay. If you're looking for a restaurant, find a restaurant expert. Right. If you're looking for a warehouse, find a warehouse expert. Right. Offices, there, it is not find, hard to find someone who's an expert. So it's in common offices. sense. Common uh, sense. Try to find, and, and but what I'm trying to say yeah. is don't do it on your own. Okay. This market is so tight, right. you just could not absorb the information, the relationships, and the knowledge with people in order to bring a deal together. Okay. Literally, there's two or three people for every vacancy. Right. But here's the caveat. Commercial real estate is not so much who going in, like in a house, everyone needs a house. Right. A couple of bathrooms, right. a, a bedroom, a kitchen, you're good. But one guy needs a restaurant, another guy needs a distribution center, another oh, guy right. needs a hospital. Yeah. So even though I may have 500 warehouses available for small distributors, if I've got a restaurant guy looking, I have no vacancy, right. even though the vacancy rate's high. And that's what makes it so difficult because we don't develop enough, rapidly enough in this community to have extra inventory available for these people. Well, we, uh, like, like you, we were discussing before, we are unique in that we're inventory constrained. Yeah. Uh, we don't have the land 
uh, outside of Phoenix or LA or Dallas or uh, right. you know, uh, Utah, <laughs> your favorite place. Uh, and, you know, it's, we're, my we're, daughter lives it, there. It, it, it's really hard to build tomorrow uh, right. the, to bring in inventory. So, so it, 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 you've been in the business for since the mid '80s, right? Mid '80s, and you've seen uh, inventory out there. Uh, so. But there are times in the past when there were crises that there was a recession that affected uh, commercial real estate, and it kind of, uh, and of course, people had to downsize or move right. out and so forth. Can you tell me uh, the first one that hit and kind of some lessons that you got out of that? Well, one of the early ones I remember, well, was the dot com. That was in 2000. There was also one in the early 80s, but I don't know what we called it. It right. was just another one of the, the, the many recessions. But the difference between that one, dot-com, and the 2008 or 2007 housing crisis was that our economy's healthy right now. Hmm. We weren't healthy. We were losing lift. ATA had gone out of business in, some, in, in the case of, of the uh, 2008. We um, weren't growing. People, you'd see in the news, fewer people coming in, this and that. We right. don't have that right, right now. We're moving on all cylinders. I heard last night that timeshares, right. which have sort of been like the ugly stepchild of the real estate business, even though they're cheap and people love right. them, timeshares have a 94% occupancy in Hawaii right now, which is ahead of our normal, supposedly 84, which is all, everything I heard this morning from Howard on the morning news. Now, with, with uh, the insights you got, um, then you don't see anything in the horizon or kind of signs that there are, are something bad in the horizon uh, going to happen. There's always exigent circumstances. Uh, first of all, let's look at the, the slow, steady right. concern I have, interest rates. Okay. If we consider continue growing and being healthy and have a booming economy, interest rates are likely to move up. Right. I actually remember 18% rates under Paul Volcker when right. I was in my well, 20s. Well, in the, in the uh, early 80s on the Carter, uh, the late 70s, early 80s, uh, Carter, Reagan, it was close over 14, 15%. Exactly. Right. So interest rates can move up. Right. We've been in this low rate world for so long, we've kind of gotten used to it. And I'm a little worried about that. As interest rates go up, they put pressure on prices to come down because a commercial real estate project is generally valued based on what it earns. Okay. Okay, right. and we take a lot of stuff and we come up to the gross income. Right. And then we come to the net income, the amount right. that the owner of the property can put in his pocket, either right. to pay his mortgage or to pay his right. ex-wives or whatever. money in, in right. his wallet to, to uh, pay. So it. that right. net operating income is multiplied against a rate of return. Right. We call that the capitalization rate. Right now, we're using about five and a half percent. Right. It seems to have pressure upwards. I see five and three quarter and six in the next year. So it's better, that will put pressure right. on prices downwards. On right. the other hand, we have so little inventory, right. there's always pressure upwards as long as the business is coming in and the pressure is there to fill the empty spaces. So you see an external uh, world of interest rates, but at the same time, we seem to be unique with, with our own market. Oh, absolutely. We are unique in that we sort of generate our own value in business and everything else. But should tourism drop off, a terrorist uh, act, we lose a plane over right. the Pacific. Some, a hurricane hits us well, and hits us hard. That's right. Uh, All of these things could yeah. be horrible situation That's right. for property. And, and, and uh, we're not a diver diversified economy. No. We're uh, more reliant on tourism than, yeah. remember the 80s, we were on a three-legged stool, which meant uh, agriculture, uh, mm -hmm. uh, military, mm -hmm. and tourism. Now agriculture is gone. Uh, military is steady, but uh, tourism has really taken over to maybe 60, 70%, yeah. and the rest is services is of the economy. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're correct that we sh uh, should be worried, but Everything is going on uh, six cylinders, so we're really not. How worried do you want to get about what you don't know? It depends on the type of person you are. Um, I imagine the person that's really worried about hurricanes and the like would maybe not own property. They might keep their assets in something that is away from any natural disasters. Like gold. <laughs> gold, you know, stock, anything right, like right, that, right. absolutely. Yeah. Um, Not tangible real estate. Real estate say. owners tend to be hands-on. Right. They like being able to touch the asset, right. like gold. Um, right. But the situation is maybe an industrial property made out of concrete is more uh, 
to someone's liking than a uh, residential or a uh, multifamily property high in a hill that could be affected. But, but again, when you talk about commercial real estate for right. investors, there has to be, a, like you say, a rate of return. Right. Uh, there's income and so yeah. forth, and you can get a loan on that. And it, it basically, looking at the future, so you get uh, monthly payments, and then you have net income yeah. that you can invest and put in the bank and so forth. So that's what commercial real estate is all about. But at the same time, if the tenant can't pay <laughs> the rent, then you have real problems. Well, you know? This is where the market tells you yeah. what's going on. If you have a vacancy and it's vacant longer than you care for it to be vacant, right. you will lower your price or improve your property. Mm -hmm. My experience in Oahu properties, to be honest, the landlords don't really take care of them. They, it's a cash cow. The money comes right. in any way. They yeah. really don't have to attract tenants. The biggest problem I have when I'm moving a new tenant is, is, is the condition of the property to move them into. <laughs> of course, for the it's, tenant it's, point, of, a point of view. They'd right. almost always be willing to pay the price. Yeah. But it, the property just doesn't look like it deserves it. Yeah. And that's always a, a bit of a problem. And, and Not what, all of them, but yeah, we don't have much and, new and inventory. What, what happens as a broker, you're trying to make a good deal for both the tenant and, and, and the owner, well, but the tenant sees a, a place that's really needs work, right. what happens? Well, you know, it, it becomes part of a negotiation, how badly the tenant wants it. If enough tenants pass that property by, then the owner will get the message that right. he's either got to lower the price right. to attract his tenants or do something else to attract the tenants. Mm -hmm. A building with a known bad roof, a leaky roof. Right. Yeah. Everyone knows it's got a leaky roof, or even worse, uh, there's asbestos underneath some floor tiles. And it's known, it's in the thing, yeah. and it's all sealed <laughs> right. up, but it makes people crazy right. to know it's there. Um, those issues have to be dealt with. Some people won't even consider the property. Mm. How badly does the person want to get in right. business? Right. How perfectly does this property suit them in other reasons? For instance, right. lo location yeah, is still location is everything. absolutely yeah. critical. Right. Um, so if the location's good and the price is sort of acceptable and it's not in terrible shape and you can get the owner maybe to fix the roof, yeah. that is how we're doing okay. it. But um, we don't have a big problem. We, I was fortunate enough to put three properties in the market in the last 10 days, total of about $12.5 million. They all had multiple offers and they all went in escrow. I think the last one went in escrow this morning. The biz, they were five and a half capped on legitimate uh, income that was projected but agreed upon by all parties. Um, I think the sellers did well. You know, I think the buyers probably did well too. You never know until everything moves on, but I think our economy is going to grow. And I think because of that, anything you buy now, yeah. and we'll grow. come back to that on, on the uniqueness of the Hawaii market after we take this break. This is Think Tech Hawaii raising public awareness. I love music. Yeah, I saw we're doing. Truth is, I'm impressed. I haven't been asked such intelligent questions in a long time. Thanks. Do you want to be cool like me? If so, watch my show on Tuesdays at 1 called Out of the Comfort Zone. I sang this song to you because I think you either are cool or have the potential to be seriously cool. And I want you to come watch my show where I bring in experts who talk all about easy strategies to be healthier, happier, build better relationships, and make your life a success. So come sit with the cool kids at Out of the Comfort Zone on Tuesdays at 1. See you. We are back for Business in Hawaii, the second half of our show really describing the state of commercial and industrial real estate in Hawaii with our guest, Mark Ambard, who is the principal of his own independent company, and he's been in business for a long time. And uh, we've been uh, together uh, a long time ago and kind of going into the future right now, and which is that if we were going to ask Mark to hypothetically project ourselves out. This is the year 2018, and if we see the year 2020, or in slightly around that time, and there's something bad happens to the economy, something that really affects how people will do business in the economy, what should landlords be preparing to do 
to preserve their investment so that really it retains value and is an asset? What would that be? Always a difficult question to advise landlords to prepare for the worst when they're experiencing the best. Yes, why, why would you, you know, even think of that? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's, and um, the first thing for them to do is do a financial plan with their lawyer and their accountant and find out when is an optimum time for them to be selling a property. Okay, right. If they should hold for 10 years or more, right. they'll probably go right through any difficult situation. Right. They're getting rents. The rents right. really aren't going right. to change. Yeah, they could go yeah. down a little bit, but they'll probably be they're, all right. I'll get to that. For the long run, I'll get right? to the rent stabilization yeah, no, no, in a minute. No. But I think as far as talking about it, but if they are looking at some kind of planning, uh, a medical situation, right. a family situation, right. and the time is to sell in the next right. two to three years, they've got to decide if they want to do that. Okay. Now, as we get closer, to the two or the three years out, we'll right. know right. if we're... Of course, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we everybody's that, yeah. worried about what's right. going on with the last 10 years yeah. of growth, right? So we say, find out what you need to do so you're prepared to do it. Exactly. Step one, be able to go across. Right. Now, if you have a so five-year window... You have a plan. Right. Yeah, if you have a five-year window, well, we might have something happen in yeah. five years. I right. couldn't really, you know, and we, across 10 years, we definitely right. will. Now, with regard to weathering the storm, Start now, you have an opportunity in a strong market as you're, over the next two to three years, most people will have a lease transition over two to three years. Most leases are three to five years. Right. Over the next three years, a number of them will renegotiate. Right. Now so, is the so time. So we're looking for, uh, forward to a critical time when there's a lot of leases come up. Right? Well, right. you know what's going on with yours, but the point I'm making is there's a lot of people right now, it's a strong market. Right. If you have a lease come up and you're gonna renegotiate, yeah. Make sure your tenant is strong. Don't, right. ju don't just go for top dollar. I've noticed a weak tenant or a tenant who's nervous yeah. will agree to any number oh, you want right, to go right, into a lease right. to get the lease because yeah. once they're in, it's hard to move them out. Okay. The people that come in and say, I'll pay anything I want, i got to be in tomorrow. And how does the landlord investigate that right, and check this tenant out well, if this tenant is really strong financially, yeah. economically, and business-wise? Well, uh, you know, it's tough. You, you've yeah. got to do your research. Um, interesting story today, we had someone call us today about one of the properties that we have in escrow. And we were determining whether we were going to meet them and show them property. And uh, my partner said, I'm not so sure. So I just looked at the guy's email address and typed in the domain right. and went to what the company was because yeah. we'd never heard of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a huge company. Wow. It's yeah. someone very interesting could come to <laughs> yeah, Hawaii. Yeah. It's a very exciting yeah. situation. So that's one of the things yeah. you want to do. Financial strength. Who, what tenant will weather bad times. Mm. If the economy dips a bit, yeah. who's going to stay? That's right. Are the contractors going to stay? Yeah. Are the distributors going to oh, stay? What type of client? What type uh, of client? What kind of the business category. In that would weather the storm the, the most uh, effectively. And the way to yeah. do that is you can look back at who stayed in business over the last 15, good, good point. Years. So you but, look back at, yeah. uh, at a, a recession period and say, who were the survivors of that and did well and, 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 and sustained right. themselves to today? And many owners don't do that. Yeah. Some of the institutional owners, the developers, they have teams that do that. Most of them rely right. on the brokerage firms to give them this kind of advice. And we rely on the research firms to right. give us the advice and the people we talk to and work it around. Um, the, the basic issue is strengthening your situation we have probably two to three years of good times ahead. That's my best opinion. Okay, yeah. Barring an exigent circumstance. I mean, January 13th, we thought we were going to get blown up by a missile from North Korea. So, I mean, talk about your bizarre exigent circumstances. Okay. We get all kinds of stuff here. It's Hawaii. Strengthen your income base. Quality tenants, good rents, and you can push your rents now. Um, build your cushions, have your, because money's coming in, you're building in good condition so that if you do need to re-rent, it's attractive. Okay, so, so that's, that's another um, good point, that they shouldn't just let the building deteriorate, but they should uh, really improve it over time so they'll be ready for a better tenant in the future? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Uh, we tend to get lazy in Hawaii because it's such a good market. Yeah. We can get a tenant, and we don't really have to put lipstick on our buildings to attract the tenant. Um, I'm industrial, commercial industrial right. realtor and investment realtor predominantly. 
So I don't see the pretty stuff. I don't get to go right. to the new stores at Alamoana right. right. Center, right. the nice new offices. But built. there's so many people out there, businesses who want to, uh, those uh, storage or industrial. Absolutely, and uh, I've got to, yeah. and I've got to take them. Right. I mean, I spent the last 15 years selling right. caves, right. all right, <laughs> and it worked. And we right. made a ton okay. of money for the right. developer. Okay. But the fact of the matter is, a lot of these properties are allowed to deteriorate. The roofs, the painting, okay. it's just they have a tenant. Yeah. They're getting their money. Why put the yeah. money in it? No one's got right. a problem until the tenant leaves. Right. And I bring a new tenant up to the building and I say, we'd like $1.25 a square right. foot for this warehouse, Mr. Whoever. And he looks and he goes, you know what? Obviously the roof <laughs> leaks here. I can tell that. <laughs> Obviously the door's yeah. broken. Obviously not, the concrete's not a, cracked. Not a 100% you know, place well, for their business. It yeah. just puts the situation of negotiation. Yeah. And you know, my job is to try to get both parties to understand course, what their yeah. value is and then try to find a point where they meet, yeah. who fixes what, who right. gets free rent. If I happen to put a concrete contractor into a building yeah. that needs concrete work, well, that's a simple one. <laughs> right. That works very well. Yeah, they can take care of themselves. Indeed. Well, that's a very simple answer, but, uh, but yet very complex because a lot of landlords, uh, like you say, are really uh, putting the money in the bank or spending it for their own purposes other than improving their properties. Nothing necessarily wrong with that. And in a triple net lease, the tenant is responsible for certain right. levels of maintenance. Right. But because we also have ground leases, right. where right. the building owner is responsible for every, I mean, the landowner does nothing, the yeah. owner is responsible for everything, we get confused okay. sometimes. In a triple net lease that does have management, maintenance, and insurance requirements paid for by the tenant monthly, we don't know the owner really is doing that sinking fund for the roof mm. that's going to be needed in 12 years. They may be very wealthy and able to do it. Things get pushed often, you know. Too far down the line. More than they need yeah, to yeah. be. And it's nice okay. to see a little maintenance go along. Right. But in all honesty, we've had hard and, hard and, uh, and easy times. And sometimes we just, during the easy times, we want to pocket the money and enjoy our <laughs> lives. I can't blame so, these people. So um, is, is uh, uh, the market for tenants really, really tough right now? Yeah, it is tough. Um, and not so, only finding yeah. what you want and the size you want, yeah. but in the location you want yeah. and at a price that you can even hope to pencil yeah. out in your business. It is not a, it is a difficult time to start now, a small business in Hawaii. If it's tough for local Hawaii. companies, you know, or you know, people from here trying to grow in Hawaii, it must be really tough for companies coming in from the mainland or Japan or wherever uh, to build a new businesses in Hawaii. It would depend on their capitalization. Some of them come in here not with the intent of getting a profit, but in the intent of having a connection to Hawaii in order right, to generate yeah, profits right, back home. Right. So oftentimes the offshore players have a different reason for doing what they're doing. And they pay more. They not only not necessarily will pay more, but they're so much stronger financially right. they get looked okay. at. Okay. You know, it's hard to tell a landlord, here's a nice local player starting up a business, right. a cute business gonna be right. great. Here's a Small subsidiary of a twenty billion dollar, you know. Uh, I'll take that one. <laughs> which one would you like <laughs> right. signing your lease? No, it's a, the, it's yeah, obvious, and that one. makes it all the more difficult for this player to work. From his way the up. landlord point of view, uh, perspective, you're absolutely right. I, I, it's it's a no brainer, but that is makes it even more challenging right. for the local uh, business, uh, right. now, you know, entrepreneur. Now, I have been a landlord's representative agent for many many years. I've represented thousands of tenants. Okay, whether I independently or right. in, in dual agency or something like that. But uh, the landlords still have the control even when the times are tough because they're just, when times are tough, there's fewer tenants, they're not coming in and they're almost begging to get a space because they're not, they're, their financial sheets don't look that right. good. You get a, a good, strong, well, perfect example is when times are bad, who comes in and scoops up all the properties? Those all cash buyers, they come in there That's and right. get them all. Right, right. Same concept yeah, with leasing, yeah. okay. the strong survive. Okay. It's good, so, so it's bad, it's tough to be a tenant. Yeah, for, uh, even though it's a very difficult uh, time, that you recommend for tenants to be very strong financially. Well, obviously, yeah. be strong financially or have a good story. Yeah. You know, if you can convince, I've had many times where yeah. a tenant who shouldn't have gone to the building, <laughs> okay. okay? I've just kind of dug them and I liked their story, what they were going to do. And I was able to give yeah. that enthusiasm right. to a landlord oh. who maybe I've known a long time and trusts right. me. Right. And maybe a chance is taken. So and that goes back. The, you become the voice of the tenant. You become an right. advocate for yeah. the tenant. You're right. definitely the, the only way the landlord knows who the tenant is right. is through the broker who's made He doesn't meet yeah. the tenant until right. long yeah. after. But to bring the, the circle closed, it's the advocacy for the tenant and then bringing the tenant in that the broker brings to the relationship. I said earlier, what would someone do? Give me an example of such a, a player who, who uh, had a very 
compelling story. There was an business. embroidery company. Yeah. They did um, embroider on sports equipment, okay. sports stuff. Right, you, right. Your coach says yeah, Coach yeah, Ray, right, right. and they did this. And they'd been working out of a garage for mm. 15 or 20 wow. years. Um, 10, 15 years. A local family, I, because my kids were in soccer and baseball right. and everything else, had spent a ton of money okay. with these people right. getting this stuff and picking it up in the garage. I'm um, working at a um, outlying uh, mall, oh, uh, actually it's Stadium Mall where the Ice Palace right, right, right. is. I'll give credit where credit's due. Um, and they came in and they had a reputation that I knew and all the kids and right. the location was perfect because right. every sports kid in the right. island could come into IAEA yeah. right there where the Ice Palace is, right. plus every kid in Hawaii knows where the Ice Palace okay. is. And we had this empty store, had been empty a while. Now we're talking late 80s, early 90s on this one. So we're going back right. a ways. Uh, way back, yeah. I talked to the lady. She was really nice. I'd right. worked with her. Yeah. She had equipment in her garage. Yeah. She'd moved this stuff. The size was about right. Her numbers were good. And but I this went. is a small company when you think about it. Yeah, it's it, right? a little bitty one. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's a one person show. You know, <laughs> okay. if they've been doing 100 grand a year. Yeah, right. And I went to the owner who is very, Doug Taylor, yeah. very local player, very good man, um, and just said, I think these people will mm. work. And he kind of listened to the story, and he's also able to make his own judgments. Oh, he's been leasing yeah. his own. He built that that yeah. uh, that place himself. Okay. There's stories of him smoothing the ice the first time by standing <laughs> on a four by eight with a metal blade on it, being dragged by an old Chevy across the ice. So I mean, it, it goes all the way back to the solar powered monster okay. he has now. But he took a chance. They're still there. Wow, that's you know, a great story. Um, and the people love him and know where they are. Yeah, and yeah. they just needed to get that location. Right. So, so that's the kind of it, thing that it happened. It worked out for everybody and for the children of Hawaii. Oh. They had an outlet right there at the Easier ice for the parents. Don't have to yeah. go to this house in Pearl City. You know, no one wants to go to someone's garage on Saturday night and do that. And they open the garage. They have 7,000 hats. Great, but <laughs> nicer to go Ice okay. Palace. But, but again, that, that's reflective of how uh, brokers uh, play a role in the economy. And you mentioned one. Uh, wants to be a broker's broker. What does that mean? Um, brokers are suspicious of each other. Yeah. It's, there's competition, there's yeah. all kinds of things going on, and certain brokers can't, like some of the big companies can't right. hire each other. Right. When I left uh, the company we were right. at, yeah. there was work that needed to be done with the principals. Two right. of the principals owned a property oh. in Kalihi and needed work yeah. done. And it was uh, legal type stuff. Right. It involved the tenants and this and that, all kinds of crazy stuff with the leasehold. They needed a broker to come in and market it, but they needed a broker to represent other brokers. Oh, and I was okay. good oh, for that right, because right. I had enough of a reputation of yeah. doing a good job, but I was an independent. Right, I, I, right. I literally was no competition right. of any sort to the right, bigger company. Right. They could tell me their secrets. Yeah. They could fill me in on what right. I needed to know, knowing there's Yeah, you don't no, represent a huge organization. And they know that I wasn't inclined to do yeah. that. Okay. I mean, the principal that I worked right. for knew when I left that I was going to be a single show right. for 30 years, right. as I still am. And that was the reason oh, they felt that, I, I would sit. Plus, I guess they knew my skills. So, so you help out the broker community, the larger ones at least. Yeah, I've been called, there's a couple of broker firms that have called me in, you know, for some of the expertise I have. But frankly, I'm getting long in the tooth. That expertise has been, uh, has been, <laughs> no, been told. No, no. Maybe a little wisdom <laughs> remains, but no, uh, you some have of these a lot, young, lot of background, a lot oh, of details. Oh, there are some uh, young guys years. out there that just oh, amaze wow. me. Really? They're just, yeah. Oh, my goodness. I'm working yeah. with one. He's uh, yeah. just get a chance to work with one. Well, maybe we should have those people in the future to kind of, kind of uh, uh, hear those stories. But yeah. we're at the end of our show. Oh, uh, great. It's it went quick. So, uh, well, I told you it's a quick show. It really was. <laughs> in I many was, ways. I was and somewhat I, concerned. I, yeah, <laughs> and I'd like to thank Mark for his insights. I think it's a valuable kind of um, show for landlords and tenants and for business to really develop and uh, grow and become successes in Hawaii. Thank you so much. This is Ray Tsuchiyama.